Hello, and welcome to Factoring Trinomials when the leading coefficient is greater than 1. The leading coefficient is the number in front of the x squared term. So if you start with an example that has a number in front of the x squared other than 1 or greater than 1, this is how you would factor it. Take a look at our first example. The first example is 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. Please write that down. Now, the way that you start this is very similar to regular trinomials. You're going to start with two sets of parentheses, and the things that multiply to be 2x squared are going to be 2x and x. The next situation, we have to ask ourselves what n multiplies to 3. Now, the numbers 1 and 3 over here in the corner are what multiply to 3. And the big question now is, how am I, how am I going to get 7 out of 1 and 3? Try to remember that one of these numbers, either the 1 or the 3, is going to be multiplied by 2. So if I was to multiply the 2 times 1 and add it to the 3, I would get 5. If I was to multiply the 2 times 3 and add it to 1, I would get the 7. So since that is the correct combination, you want to put the 3 in a spot that is opposite the... Um, number 2. So when I pick up this 3, I don't want to put it here because it's going to be multiplied by the x. If I was to put it here, it would in fact be multiplied by the 3. Think about it, when you draw those double arrows to distribute, the 2 times 2x two times 3 is, is what's going to give you the 6x. So if I was to move this 1 over into this position, when I multiply 1 times x, I wind up with 1x. So 1x plus 6x actually gives me the 7. And then the final answer would be with plus signs, in essence because they are both positive. So I'm going to put a plus 1 here and a plus 3 there. Now the interesting thing here is you don't te technically have to double check these parts of the rainbow because um, 2x times x is 2x squared and 1 times 3 is definitely a positive 3. It's this part, the bottom part, that you need to check the most. And I will focus an arrow on these two. You need to check this and you need to check this in order to make sure that it produces that 7x. Let's take a look at another example. So the next one is 3x squared minus 8x plus 5. So we are again going to start with 3x and x. And the numbers that multiply to 5 are in fact 1 and 5. So the big question is, when I multiply this 3 times whatever number goes in this second set of parentheses, it needs to be able to produce an 8. So let's think about that for a second. 3 times 5 plus or minus 1 versus 3 times 1 plus or minus 5. I think the only way to get 8 out of this scenario is definitely 3 times 1 um, and a 5. Now, in this case, they're both going to be negative, so the, th the 1 needs to go across from the 3, and the 5 is going to go next to the x. When I check these two, I wind up with 5x here, and I wind it with 3x there, which is close to negative 8. In essence, if they are both negative, then this problem would work, because it would be negative 5x and negative 3x, which produces the negative 8x. This is called the trial and error method, and it does take a little bit of time to get used to, but the more of them that you do, they should make sense. Let's take a look at the next one. The next one is 2x squared minus 3x minus 14. This one is a little bit more difficult because 14 has multiple factors. So I don't know if I'm going to use the 1 and the 14 or the 2 and the 7. Regardless, I always start with a 2x and an x. And again, I have to ask myself, how am I going to produce the number negative 3 out of 1 and 14 or 2 and 7? So if I have a 1 times 3 plus or minus 14, that's not going to get me negative 3, uh, 1 times 2. Um, if I was to do 2 times 2, plus or minus 7, we're getting closer. If the 2 was positive and the 7 was negative, this would in fact produce negative 3. 
So now automatically I know that the two needs to go across from the two. The two needs to go across from the two. So I'm going to put a two in here. And the seven could go here. Now, as we said before, the two has to be positive and the seven has to be negative. Double checking these outside terms, this would give me 4x, and this inside would in fact give me negative 7x. When I add those together, I get the negative 3x that I wanted. Let's go to the next one. So it looks like this, 5x squared minus 29x minus 6. And again, I'm going to start with two sets of parentheses, 5x and an x. So here we want it to multiply to be negative 29 when whatever number I'm putting in this set of parentheses is going to be multiplied by 5. When I look at the factors of 6, 1 and 6 and 2 and 3, automatically I think to myself, well, 5 times 6 minus 1 is in fact positive 29. If I did 5 times negative 6 plus 1, I would definitely get the negative 29 that I want. So the 1 is going to go here by itself, and the 6 is going to go here, and we have to in fact make the 6 negative and the 1 positive. Double checking the two key areas here, this times this gives me 1x, and this outside gives me negative 30x. When I add them up together, I get the negative 20x, 29x that I wanted in the problem. Again, this is trial and error, and it's very, very um, time-consuming, but it's much better than the eyeglass method. Let's take a look at the next one. So the following, 3x squared plus 11x plus 6. I'd like to give you a second to copy it, and then try it on your own. Okay, so now when I take a look, I'm definitely going to start with my two sets of parentheses. I'm going to have 3x and x. And again, we want it to add to 11 when one of the numbers is being multiplied by 3. So I think to myself, 3 times 1 plus 6, that doesn't add up to 11. 3 times 6 plus 1, that doesn't add to 11. 3 times 3 plus 2, ding, 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 that adds to 11. So I know for a fact that the 3 needs to be across from the 3x. And the 2 needs to be next to the x. In essence, this is going to give me 2x and 9x. When I add them up together, I wind up with 11x, which is what I wanted. In this case, both scenarios, we have positives because in the example it says 3x squared plus 11x plus 6. So I wind up with positive and positive. We're almost done. So the next one, 2x squared minus 7x plus 6. A little more practice, and we'll realize that we're going to do 2x and x. One of these numbers is going to be multiplied by 2, and then added or subtracted to the other to produce a 7. So I'm realizing that if I was to do 2 times 2 uh, minus 3, 2 times a negative 2 minus 3, I wind up with negative 7. So automatically the thing that goes across from the 2x is going to be a negative 2, and in the inside is going to be a negative 3. This gives me negative 3x and negative 4x. Those add up to negative 7x. Okay, the next one. 3x squared minus 5x minus 8. I'm going to do a 3x and an x. So here, I need something that I can multiply by 3 and then add or subtract to the other number to produce the negative 5. Keep in mind that we're looking for key spots or key numbers to go into these two spots. If I was to do 3 times 1 plus or minus 8, I would in fact get a negative 5. So let's try it and see what happens. If I put 
uh, positive 1 across from the 3, and a negative 8 here. Let's see, this produces 3x, this produces negative 8x, and when I add them together, I get negative 5x, so then I did it correct. Again, some more practice, you'll realize that you are multiplying one of these numbers by 3, and then adding or subtracting it to the others, and you'll be able to figure out which numbers go where. And the last slide, number 9, it looks like this. 4x squared minus 5x plus 6. This one is a little bit more difficult because when I start to do this, I don't know for sure if it's going to be 2x and 2x or 4x and x. So the reason that this is more difficult is because the leading coefficient, in fact, is composite. And what that means is that it does not prime. It is not prime, so it has more than two factors. When I look at my factors of 6, which I have over here on the right side, I wonder, should I multiply either of them by 2 and then add or subtract to the others to get negative 5? Or should I multiply one of them by 4 and then add or subtract it to get the 5? So, in this case, I'm going to start with 2 times 1 plus or minus 6. There's no way that that's going to produce a negative 5. I'm going to do 4 times 1 plus or minus 6. There's no way that's going to produce a 5. I'm going to do 2 times 2 plus 3 times 2. That's not going to produce a 5. And guess what? If I do 2 times 4 plus or minus a 3, that will produce the negative 5 that I wanted. It should be 2 times negative 4 plus 3 gives me negative 5, just like I wanted. So the 2 is going to go across from the 4 and that's going to be negative 2, and the positive 3 is going to go next to the x. So these two, when multiplied together, would give me 3x, these would give me negative 8x, and those add up to the negative 5x that I wanted. Okay, I hope this clears it up a little, and I will see you soon.